UNM students are likely to be paying more in tuition and fees next year. That's if the lottery revenues keep declining and ASUNM fees keep rising. Today there's a truth in Palestine, but last month there wasn't one, or on our campus either. Jun Fu Han is one photography student that's come a long way. The New Mexico Lottery Scholarship has raised one half billion dollars for New Mexico education. That money benefits thousands of New Mexico high school graduates who will continue their educations at public schools in the state. But since the economy has declined, money has gotten tighter for rising college tuition. Brianna Morfin takes a closer look. Since 1996, when the New Mexico Lottery was first introduced, it has provided scholarship money to local students. New Mexico Lottery Communications Manager, Linda Hamlin, says they've had to closely manage expenses. We know when the lottery was brand new, there was a lot of enthusiasm and excitement because no one had ever played the lottery in New Mexico. And so ticket sales were very strong in that first year and they continued to be strong uh, every year up until around uh, 2008 when the economy faltered. But we were still able to return record revenues to the scholarship program because we really closely managed our expenses. Uh, we froze salaries, we froze hiring, uh, we didn't increase our advertising expenses because we were so committed to strict fiscal discipline. Today, the scholarship is a big part of New Mexico education, but we asked Ivan Ali, a University of New Mexico alum, from the days before the scholarship, what he thought about um, it. When I graduated from high school in 1994, um, it was about two years before the lottery scholarship uh, came about, which would have been nice for me because for four years, of my college career, I, I paid it out of pocket. And would I have had that incentive to get the lottery scholarship, I think it would have helped me in, in going through school uh, in a shorter span of time, having to work less and being able to like keep my grades up. Yaritza Ruiz, a UNM freshman, says it helps relieve her worries about her family's finances. It'll help me pay for college and it also helps my family financially. Um, I have two younger sisters, so they, first of all, they have to pay for their expenses, and having to add on the extra cost of my college is going to make it even worse. The lottery has um, returned more than half a billion dollars to the lottery tuition fund to help students go on to college. The New Mexico lottery didn't do that. Our players did that. Ticket sales aren't where they should be, but with New Mexicans' help, more students can continue to higher educations. And it's so important that they do remember that when they're buying that lottery ticket, they may be helping their son, their grandchild, their, their neighbor's uh, son or daughter uh, go on to college. Just as our logo says, benefiting New Mexico's future. This is Brianna Morfin reporting. The ASUNM Senate is looking to increase the student activity fee, which currently sits at $20 per semester per student. It changes due to shortfalls in the budget that funds student groups on campus. The ASUNM fee has not been updated since 2002, and some senators are predicting an even greater shortfall if no changes are made. Bridget Chavez has the story. Full-time undergraduate students pay $20 per semester in ASUNM fees. The fee is set in the ASUNM Constitution and is separate from next year's Student Fee Review Board recommendation of nearly $600. Within SFRB, you go through um, a bunch of uh, departments or resource centers and stuff coming to request what student fees are going to be used for uh, throughout the year. And this fee comes into a very large number, whereas just the ac &M fee is a much smaller number, it, where, and it is solely managed only by the students and distributed by the students. Last year, the appropriations budget, which a portion of the $20 goes to, ran out of funds before the year was over. In recent years, we just have been hitting a very hard budget deficit, and we just haven't been able to accurately fund our groups to the point that, you know, now it's whether or not they're going to be able to accurately function. Some groups that depend on ASUNM financial support got what they needed, but others came up short. Fortunately, Trailblazers falls under the office of the president and the student um, alumni association, so uh, 
we receive the majority of our funding from those two entities. Senators Tyler Crawley and Brandon Jordan are expecting the budget to run out even quicker in the 2013-2014 academic year if no changes are made. The only way that you can be able to function correctly and keep up with the times is either to raise your revenues or make cuts. So that way you can continue working properly. And so since we don't necessarily want to make cuts to anything within the student government, we decided that we wanted to raise revenues and the only way we can possibly do that is by raising the ASUMP. Full-time UNM students now pay $612 per year in fees, with the largest portions going to pay for facilities at $258, the Student Health Center at $96, and the recently increased athletics fee of $66, which was recently increased by the UNM Board of Regents to pay off athletics debt. And UNM students could face an even larger financial burden if the ASUNM fee increases by another $20. Well, I mean, when you put it that way, it does sound um, maybe a lot considering how many students go to UNM, but I used to be a student at New Mexico State and our fees towards our um, Senate were much higher, um, and honestly, I just don't notice a difference. When you put it in numbers like that, it seems significant, but in the long run, it doesn't really matter. That's the overall goal of it, is to increase the amount of funding available to make sure that we can fund our student groups the way they want to be funded, so that they can represent UNM on a national level, and so that, in the end, we can make college more than just going to class. While the legislation has yet to be voted on by the ASUNM Senate, if it does pass, it must be approved by the Board of Regents and the student body who can vote on it during the 2013 ASUNM election in April. This is Bridget Chavez reporting. There's now a truce between Israel and Hamas in Gaza, but for weeks in November, fighting there drew the world's attention. Nicole Perez reports that fighting in Gaza also drew heat on the UNM campus. Occupation is a crime. Almost 100 protesters flocked to the UNM bookstore to show their support for Palestine. As the Answer Coalition and Students for Justice in Palestine organized the largest protest Albuquerque has seen on this issue, four Israel supporters stood in a sea of Palestine supporters, refusing to let the story remain one sided. I feel intimidated, honestly. Um, it's not a fun feeling. Jews here don't have a voice. Jews here don't have, you know, representation, especially at UNM campus. And with like the number of people here who are like pro-Palestine versus the two of us, you know, it's intimidating, you know. They're not protesting peace in a peaceful way. They're protesting peace in a way of you're such a horrible person. How can you possibly believe this? You're starving children. You're starving children. Palestine supporters, young and old, shouted, Gaza, Gaza, don't you cry. Palestine will never die. Horns honked and an angry biker stopped to debate. He was not received kindly. The conversation got heated. They did attack Jerusalem. They fired a rocket at Jerusalem. Protester Danya Mustafa's family lives in Palestine, so she has a more personal tie to the issue than many. As I know of, two of my family members in Gaza are, are okay. Um, my family members in the West Bank are doing fine um, because they aren't being bombarded, such as Gaza is. Mustafa said the Palestinian death toll is dozens of times that of Israel's. She said many of the victims are innocent children. Sarah Abanyi said Israel is vital to U.S. foreign policy. And Israel keeps democracy thriving in the Middle East. They take so many Palestinian refugees, Iranian refugees, refugees from Saudi Arabia who are persecuted because they can't be gay, because they can't be Christian. And Israel takes those people and allows them to practice their religion and their sexuality in that country. There's no such thing as gay rights anywhere else in the Middle East. And I'm also part of the LGBT community and I really support gay rights and none United of the Middle East does, except for Israel. To go, hey. Five Albuquerque police members were present in case anything got out of control. They had to escort one woman who was dancing in the middle of traffic. A driver hurled a water bottle at the protesters from his car. And although many Palestinian supporters were angry with the pro-Israeli Abani, Mustafa said she was glad Abani showed up. Like, even though I think their morals are messed up um, and you know they're misguided, 
I kind of respect their passion for being, you know, one or two people out here. You know, it takes a lot of courage to, like, really be passionate about something stand alone. This is Nicole Perez. UNM graduate student Jun Fu Han is a foreign exchange student, a photojournalism instructor, and has photographed for publications across the state, including the Daily Lobo. Now he has one more title under his belt, honorable mention as a college photojournalist of the year. Chelsea Irvin has the story. UNM graduate student Jun Fu Han recently won an honorable mention award in the portrait category of the prestigious College Photojournalist of the Year contest. Thousands of students from more than 17 countries entered the contest, and Han says the honor encourages him to work even harder. It's like this thing I always want to get. It's, uh, it's a recognition, recognition for me. It's like they're saying, hey, you did a good job last year. It really encouraged me to, you know, go further, take risks, and, you know, explore more and be creative, think out, out of the box more. And Daily Lobo editor-in-chief Liz Cleary says the award is a major honor in the photojournalism community and an honor Han is well deserving of. They refer to it as like the Pulitzer of the college realm, so it's definitely a big, big deal. It's very well deserved and we're really proud of him and at the Lobo we're just glad that we can have someone working with us who's got that much talent and that much energy. Han attributes his success to his work ethic. I give up a lot of things before I came to the U.S. I had a career in Google. It was a really well-paying job. I thought about it. If I really, you know, give up those things, I need to make this worth it. I need to work hard. But Han says the sacrifice was worth it. I'm not in the little cube anymore. I used to be sitting in the cube for like 10, 12 hours a day. I want to go outside and talk to people and breathe fresh air and like, I think it's worth it. It's totally worth it. Like comparing to a life to a small cube to like the whole world. Han's colleague, Juan Lebrecht, says Han has a unique ability to capture stories most photojournalists don't get. Jun Fu will spend as much time as he possibly needs to get an intimate story. That's what makes Jun Fu a good journalist, is that he finds the intimate sides of stories. And when you find the intimate sides of stories, you find stories that nobody else can get. Han says his goal is to return to his native home, China, and use his photojournalism skills to preserve his people's rich culture. We are looking at Justin Bieber, Lady Gaga. We forgot who we are. I want to go back home and tell my people this is who we are. We need to be who we are. What we can do is not like an, a foreigner coming to the country and tell, hey, you guys are losing culture. We need like a native from there and telling the people, hey, we're doing the wrong thing. We're looking at the wrong thing. What we're doing right now, it's not who we are. We are lost our identity. Han says he is a firm believer in the power of photojournalism. Images can impact people a lot. And just like everybody who's studying journalism has this dream of changing the world. I, I still have that. This is Chelsea Irvin reporting. In another week, most of UNM community will be on holiday break. Often that means celebrating with friends and family, with lots of opportunities for getting behind the wheel when conditions are poor, or using the cell phone on the way to the auntie's house, or driving under the influence. That typically results in one or more members of the UNM community never returning to school as planned. So this year, let's all use our heads and see each other in January. I'm Jordan Umbrizat. And I'm Samantha Almack. Thank you for joining us on campus. The ASU name speak. It's oh, so fast. I'm sorry. I... I was like, yeah. UNM students are likely to be thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Auntie's house? That's what it says. <laughs>